The Adventure Time Iceberg Explained Adventure Time is one of the most watched Cartoon Network shows of all time, and with that brought a large community devoted to analyzing and breaking down the mystical concepts within the animated series, making this a great iceberg to explore. The first episode aired on April 5th, spanned all the way until its final episode on September 3rd, 2018. Raccoon Cafe created the first Adventure Time Iceberg Explained video, which was great, and after watching the follow-up video, I saw this iceberg chart right here, created by Crystal Conspiracy, intriguing me to look further into it, as they had more entries. The link is in the description. I decided to add some things and change it up a bit. So without further ado, let's get into the iceberg and see how deep it goes. Oh, and also my name is Valis. Nice to meet you. You're most likely new. If you end up enjoying this video, be sure to subscribe. It helps out the channel a lot. Non-chronological episodes. We know that some episodes in a series are not directly chronological. For example, episode Princess Putlock was supposed to air directly after Bimo Noir, but the publication's order got changed. This image briefly explains it, displaying Finn's missing sock in season 4 that was found by Bimo, but then in season 5 it still remains missing. This is not unusual for television shows to do, but then again this is all based on fan speculation. What do you guys think? pilot episode. This entry could be referencing either Slumber Party Picnic or the original Nicktoons pilot reel, being rejected twice by Nickelodeon into being converted into a full-time show. Take a look. Jay! Jay! Good morning! What you doing, buddy? Meditating. What are you meditating about, dude? Wait, dude, I'm connecting to the internet with my mind. Adventure Time Movie Apparently a movie was announced in 2015. Has this become Distant Lands, the collective name of the 4 hour long streaming television special? Or is it a separate project altogether? Or was it cancelled? According to Adam Muto, executive producer and showrunner of the animated television series, a movie was never officially announced by any of the crew members or the crew itself. It's just a story that the media took and ran with, probably after hearing that the crew were maybe thinking of doing one at some point, but the crew themselves never said anything about actually working on one. We'll cover this a little bit later in the iceberg. The Snail the snail is a character that is hidden in nearly every episode of Adventure Time, usually seen waving at the screen. His cameos are a running gag. In the episode Mortal Folly, the lich possesses the snail and uses it to escape containment in the Amber Prison. Later in Mortal Recoil, the lich possesses the snail again after releasing Princess Bubblegum from his control. Ice King is Simon Simon Pichikov, formerly known as the Ice King, is the pentagonist of Adventure Time. Originally depicted as a two-dimensional, humorously over-the-top villain trying to kidnap Princess Bubblegum on a regular basis, the character's personality was subsequently expanded, revealing him to be a kind-hearted but misunderstood old man with completely twisted senses of morality and social behavior, suffering from loneliness and memory loss. Later seasons unveil his tragic backstory, revealing that he was once a good human named Simon Pichikov, who lost his mind, memories, and loved ones due to the magic crown giving him his ice powers. And come along with me, Ice King is permanently reverted back to Simon after almost being digested by Golb. Elementals The elementals are the embodiments of the four elements fire, ice, candy, and slime. Aside from these four, there's also a fifth anti-elemental. Elements is an eight episode long miniseries that aired as well, the third and final Adventure Time miniseries ever produced. Abe Lincoln Assassination Abraham Lincoln, also known as Abe in the show, was the king of Mars who debuts in the original animated short, where he encourages Finn to believe in himself after warping his brain. His first appearance in the official series is in one of the framed pictures in Hunson Abadir's house. Lincoln plays a major role in the episode Sons of Mars, where he loses his immortality and seemingly his life in order to save Jake after he was accidentally killed and sent to the 37th Dead World. As a result, Lincoln turned to stone and becomes a statue for all of eternity. 
When Abraham Lincoln sacrifices his immortality to death in Sons of Mars, a gunshot can be heard as the screen fades out. This references the actual death of Lincoln by his assassin, John Wilkes Booth. Adventure Time Comics Are Their Own Canon Adventure Time is a comic book series published by Boom Studios in the United States and Titan Comics in the UK, written by Dinosaur Comics creator Ryan North and illustrated by Shelley Paraline and Brandon Lamb. The comic book was released monthly beginning with issue number 1 in February 2012. The main comic series, issues 1 through 75, volumes 1 through 17, is non canonical with the Adventure Time television series story. Adam Muto has speculated that it may take place in a different reality entirely. Either way, the events of the comics have several events that are totally different compared to the television series. Finn Arm Foreshadowing the missing arm theme was a detail that was noticed by a few fans while watching the show, a reddit post reading, so basically I just marathoned this whole series over the past week and just now caught up. Love the show, but I noticed that the wiki never really went into detail about the reoccurring missing arm theme aside from the direct events that occurred in the show. It seems that every incarnation of Finn at some point or another is missing his right arm. Has there been any veiled meaning behind the missing right arm? The reoccurring motif of Finn missing his right arm is foreshadowing that Finn will lose his arm again in the future. It is important to note that although Finn's arm was ripped off and thus he lost the grass sword, the grass sword's curse has not been lifted. The thorn in Finn's hand foreshadows this. I think he's going to lose his arm again in another encounter. Mushroom War The Mushroom War, also referred to as the Great Mushroom War, was an apocalyptic event that occurred roughly a thousand years before Adventure Time. The war crippled and eventually resulted in near annihilation of the human species and left their civilization in ruins throughout the land of Ooh. The end of the war left much of the world devastated and devoid of much life. The infrastructure that had existed throughout the land had been mostly destroyed. The little human infrastructure that survived, such as bridges and office buildings, now lay in ruin. Evidence of the war appear in the form of abandoned military vehicles, ruined army blockades, bombed buildings, and crashed warplanes. A great deal of human technology also remained scattered throughout the land. Fiona and Cake are an alternate universe. Fiona is a fictional character and the gender-swapped version of Finn, created by the Ice King and his fanfiction. She was created by series character designer Natasha Algri in a series of webcomics and drawings. She and other gender-swapped characters appeared in the season 3 episode Fiona and Cake. She is usually seen in the company of Cake, her own stretchy companion and adoptive sister. Fiona's nemesis is the Ice Queen. She was in one of Finn's visions along with Cake. It's basically a parallel and alternate universe. Phil Face Phil Face is a running gag facial expression often used in Adventure Time. It is meant to resemble the face of Adventure Time lead character designer Phil Rianda. Penn Ward has stated that if you tell Phil about anything, he will get super excited and display a face that this was based off of. Along with the snail, it is also an easter egg. It is occasionally drawn into the show as an inside joke for the creators. Ben Ward stated on a spring that there is also a Phil Face princess, however no such character ever appeared on screen. Gunter Foreshadowing Gunter is the penguin that most commonly accompanies the Ice King. The Ice King uses Gunter as his personal servant, whereas the other penguins working for the Ice King are essentially slaves. Marceline's dad speaks to Gunter, saying that he can sense that Gunter is the most evil creature on this planet. The episode Orgelorg fully confirms Hansen Abadir's accusation of Gunter being possibly one of the most evil beings in Ooh, due to his true identity as Orgelorg. Mr. M is Martin. Martin Mertens, also formerly known as Mr. M, is Finn's biological father. Billy calls him Dad the Human, similar to Finn's title, Finn the Human. He was first revealed in Billy's bucket list, albeit briefly. Billy explains to Finn that his father is trapped in the crystal. The episode cuts to a brief scene that shows a silhouette of a man trapped in a crystal aboard a massive space station. Last Scholar of Gulb 
The Lich calls himself the last scholar of Gaub in the episode Whispers. The scholars of Gaub are beings who follow and possibly worship Gaub. Typing and the opening theme. In the opening sequence, you can faintly hear typing in the background. This is because Pendleton Ward, with no finalized version ready, sent the rough draft of the song. They went on to make the final draft that was mixed and mastered, but they decided to stick with the original. I can totally relate with this one as a musician myself. Sometimes the rough draft just hits different. Willow Smith Willow Smith created a song about Marceline. The song is on her album, Ardipithecus. She performed the song Marceline, which is based on the Afro-mentioned character, and as a result, she'd later voice character Beth in Adventure Time series finale, Come Along With Me. Rumblejaw There apparently is an up-and-coming Adventure Time special called Rumblejaw that has the same art director as Into the Florpus, and one of the borders being an OKKO OK border which Steve Hewlett, a screenwriter, confirms by saying Rumblejaw is a special based on the characters from Adventure Time. Gay Gladiator Ghosts According to Andy Ristanio, a former lead character designer, writer, storyboardist, and background artist on the animated television series, all the gladiator ghosts are homosexual. It can be noted that one of the ghosts calls the one he killed his love. Cosmic Owl based on a toilet. This is partially true. The Cosmic Owl's design is based on the reflection of a light off a urinal at the Cartoon Network Studios. The Cosmic Owl is a cosmic entity known to the inhabitants of Ooh for appearing in premonition dreams. Here are some pictures of reflections that may have inspired the design. Season 1 and 2 Oddities Crystal Conspiracy states there are a bit of things that don't get brought up again from season 1 and season 2 or are just softly reckoned out, namely Jake's imagination powers from Rainy Day Dream, Finn and Jake's wizard and ice ninja's powers, the magic puddle Jake claims to have gotten his powers from in the witch's garden, the time Jake wore Ice King's crown and when the wedding bells thaw, the Duke of Nuts, who doesn't get mentioned at all until pretty much the last couple of episodes of the show, when the show sets him up as a more prominent force in the royal world of Ooh. The Gumball Guardians having the ability to stop time, which they never use again in the series. There are just a lot of odd quirks in general that season 1 and season 2 have, such as the more expressive poses and Finn's eyes becoming much larger. Pendleton Ward hated these after a while, and they stopped appearing. Inflated Season Count the show was written to have 9 seasons, but Cartoon Network split up the original season 7 into what is now seasons 7 and 8, technically making the show one season longer than intended. It's purely a categorization thing though, they didn't actually increase the original episode count. Swears and Storyboards This entry may be referring to this image right here, posted by Emily Partridge, a storyboardist for the show, reading, It makes me mad when there are swears in the boards and I have to fix it into something that's more appropriate. Nothing is as good as what the fuck. Bueno the Bear in 2002 to 2003, Pendleton Ward, the creator of Adventure Time, published a webcomic titled Bueno the Bear. He later took down the comics because he thought they were terrible. However, he retains the name Bueno the Bear for his website and his handles on sites such as Twitter. Ward created a student film named Barista, starring Bueno the Bear that was later released by Refrigerator Studios. Two Nightmare Princesses Nightmare Princess first appears in the episode Orb. While she is called a princess, she does not appear to have a specified kingdom, being seen only wandering the ocean surrounding Ooh. It is unknown whether the Nightmare Princess is the same one that had appeared in the video game Adventure Time The Secret of the Nameless Kingdom. Her looks are very different, however, it should be noted that Nightmare Princess was able to change her shape in the game to a large form somewhat reminiscent of the one seen in the episode, so there may also just be one Nightmare Princess. Pendleton Ward left during Season 5 This one is self-explanatory. According to a profile, Pendleton Ward quit as showrunner at some point during Season 5. He says this is not with sadness or frustration, but with relief stating, I quit because it was driving me nuts. Tree Trunks was supposed to stay dead. 
tree trunks explodes in the episode tree trunks but after was seen dancing in the episode evicted according to pendleton ward this is because evicted takes place before the episode tree trunks originally in the episode tree trunks the episode creators wanted tree trunks to explode but the cartoon network officials thought that it was just too morbid for younger viewers mother gum introduced in video game the mother gum is a collection of living beings made of mutated bubblegum, first seen in the episode Simon and Marcy as being scattered out around the bombed surface area, sticking to mutants or humanoids, and giving the tools to Simon and Petrikov needed to feed Marceline chicken soup. Not much is known about the gum hive's origins. In the game Adventure Time, explore the dungeon because I don't know, the mother gum is hidden underneath the Candy Kingdom. Princess Bubblegum explains that the hive just dated her about a thousand years ago and blasted her out 827 years ago. She's been protecting them ever since. Sunny Sunny is a non-playable character in the game Adventure Time, Finn and Jake Investigations. He was the result of a contest to create a new character for the game. Sunny's description reads, Sunny is a traveling collector of Ooze's rarest artifacts. Sunny uses the Lantern of Infinite Treasures as a compass. Sunny explores the vast land of Ooze on his own, which makes him a little shy and timid. Treehouse Woman Painting on the wall above the couch in the kitchen slash lower living room, there is a ripped picture of seemingly a naked woman. However, according to Natasha Algri, it's not a naked woman at all. It's a woman in a crappy snapped bikini, whatever that means. Farewell Pat, good luck in New York, come back soon. In the episode Heat Signature, Marceline plays a prank on Finn and Jake by making them believe that they're vampires, but it goes too far and escalates when they're manipulated by her ghost friends. The ghosts chanting in the episode are actually sending a back-masked message to creative director Pat Mahil. If played backwards, the ghosts say, Farewell Pat, good luck in New York, come back soon. Take a look. Also, when the cosmic owl looks at Jake upside down in Finn's dream, Jake says in a sad tone, say goodbye in reverse. Hello. What? Say goodbye. Ice King Dementia. There's a small theory proposing that Ice King is an allegory for Alzheimer's disease. It's especially evident in the episode where he goes to Marceline's house and they write a song together. He has no recollection of his former life slash personality and it kills Marcy to see how he can't remember their relationship. His behavior is so frustrating for her and different from when he was Simon. Original Jake is dead. I was having a hard time finding a single answer for this one, but then I found the iceberg creator actually explained it, stating, Honestly, it refers to multiple things. There's the Jake with angel wings in the intro and alternate Jake in the episode is that you turning into old man prismo at the episode's end although there's a lot of convoluted time stuff going on there but namely think the weirdest case is jake at the end of temple of mars at the end of the episode jake the star child jake is stuck on a planet near a black hole with a built on and the original aired order finn rescues him at the end of temple mars however the order on hbo max which has its own numerous other errors has jake the star child after temple of mars additionally the jake at the end of the temple mars is missing the belt and doesn't mention anything from jake the star child after that point did they rescue the wrong jake just food for thought simo and pahoy simo is a type of cuboid robot with a usually cherry face on its screen like bimo it is a member of the mo series of robots however more than one Simo exists. Very little is known about Simo. One first appears as a cameo in the episode Pahoy. Mo connections to Mars and Fire Giants. At the end of the episode The More You Mo, The More You Know, Part 2, 
Bimo falls asleep and activates Mo's memory disc, which shows a scene of Mo apparently overseeing the construction of the fire giants. This implies that Mo is the original creator of the fire giants, although it's not explained as to why he created them. Original Finn Dad Revealed Original Finn Dad Reveal was a cutscene from The Lich, where it was revealed Finn's dad was a warrior who was willingly cast into the Crystal Citadel. You can see it right here. At Chronology.com This website is a complete timeline slash chronology of the history of the Adventure Time multiverse. It's pretty cool. I suggest you check it out if you're interested in a read. Bubbling Fiasco Bubbling is the film slash ship between Marceline Abadir and Princess Bubblegum from the Adventure Time fandom. Jake Death Foreshadowing this one explains itself. Some examples of this would be in the episode Hill of Igris. Finn is shown leaving Jake behind and going to see this one through on his own. In the episode Don't Look, Jake is depicted as an old man. In the episode Flute Spell, Jake sings later in the field that night I saw death. And in the episode Daddy Daughter Card Wars, Jake is seen bearing his youth, both literally and metaphorically. King of Tumblr.com KingofU.com is the official Adventure Time crew art tumbler. Adult Swim Reruns of Adventure Time are now airing on Adult Swim, surprisingly enough. I haven't had cable in two years, so I wouldn't know, but apparently they run quickly after Cartoon Network in order to ease into the more adult shows, as during these specific time lots, it's a mix of both young teens and adults. I just found out that this lasted only for about a month, so it's still pretty cool to know though. Futurama. This one is referencing the Futurama crossover with Adventure Time characters Finn and Jake. Take a look. What time is it? Time for you to shut up! Gunter's Original Offspring In a storyboard version of the episode The Chambers of Frozen Blades, Gunter's Offspring was going to be a hybrid of Ice King slash Penguin creature. However, as Adam Mudo explained, he originally drew a glowing kitten, but Thorup Van Orman, who was working on the show at the time, wanted it to be an Ice King slash Penguin offspring, which they thought would be a very cool and gross out moment. However, the network rejected this idea and went back to it being a kitten. Now let's move on to the Abyss. Scrapped Episodes This entry is referencing episodes of Adventure Time that were planned but were never made. One of them was titled Insomnia. A short synopsis reads, Finn and Jake return home exhausted and try to get some sleep. They then hear sounds that lead them into a miniature village under the roots of their tree fort. However, to fit inside, Jake has to shrink to a tiny size while Finn can only fit his hands inside. They attempt to save the dewdrop people that live there from a root monster, but are hindered by the fact that Jake's too tired to keep his shape, while Finn is distracted by cows licking him. Jake's Death Comic Steve Wolfhard, a crew member, created a comic about a head cannon he had about Jake's death, in which Jake's body blows up in size after his passing, eventually filling the empty crater in Oo. This is not canon, but since it comes from a crew member who did create some lore for the future of the show, there's a bit more credibility to this than just some random fan. What Was Missing Original Script What Was Missing is the 10th episode of the 3rd season. The finished episode centers around Finn, Jake and Bimo, Marceline and Princess Bubblegum coming together to play music as a genuine band in order to open the gates of the Door Lord and retrieve their stolen items. There was a cancelled slash banned version of the original episode that was being made which was controversial due to it being focused on a possible romantic subtext between Princess Bubblegum and Marceline. It was originally produced by Dan Rickmeyers and the only proof of its existence comes from the also controversial behind the scenes video Mathematical. Only 30 seconds of the episode exist, all in the form of sketches. It is debatable if the episode was even animated. Bonnabelle Bubblegum Gas Station as Bonnabelle Bubblegum roams the post-apocalyptic wastelands, she comes across an abandoned gas station, finding a family photo inside, triggering her emotional side, longing for a family of her own. A human skull can be seen on screen, laying on the floor, 
maybe belonging to one of the family members who owned the gas station. On the wall, a poster can be found reading Never Forget with a picture of a mushroom cloud referencing the Mushroom War. Food Chain is semi-canon. Food Chain is the 7th episode in the 6th season of Adventure Time. It is the 163rd episode overall. The synopsis reads, On a field trip to the Candy Kingdom Museum of Natural History, Finn and Jake learn about the food chain by becoming the food chain. Despite the episode being considered non-canon, it has been referenced twice in the show. Unseen Reincarnations Reincarnation is the concept that the soul or spirit, after biological death, begins a new life in a new body that may be a human, animal, or spirit. In Adventure Time, this is one of the many outcomes that await the people of U after death. Jesse Monian confirms that Jake is a reincarnation of Soko's tiger, despite not being shown in the show. Marcy's Super Secret Scrapbook Several events are detailed by Marcelin in the scrapbook, including Simon's departure, his promise to send her a guardian, and Marcelin's life as a vampire hunter. The scrapbook does not describe how Marcy found the tree fort and befriended Princess Bubblegum. The Lich Original Design His first design had a more flattened, simplified look, with larger eyes, upwards pointing horns, and a different crown and robe. The design used in the series is much different. Runic Code Adventure Time sometimes includes secret messages written in runic code. This code is a substitution cipher using a traditional runic alphabet similar to the one seen on this page. Beavers Cartoon Network censored a joke at the end of the episode Wizard, where Finn, Jake, and a wizard have their nudity covered by beavers. In the final product, they're covered by wood planks. I don't know why they thought it would be a better censorship option of the two. Scrapped Adventure Time hour-long special The Adventure Time spin-off series, Adventure Time Distant Lands, was based on scrapped ideas from the original show's final season, according to executive producer Adam Muto. Soy People Soy People is a food that rainy corns eat instead of real human flesh. Introduced in the episode, her parents. At the end of the episode, Ethel explains that because all humans are thought to be extinct, they have never tasted real human flesh, but soy people is supposed to taste exactly the same and is apparently delicious. It looks like a ball of dumpling marinated in a soy sauce that has a smiley face. Finn reluctantly took a bite of it and apparently liked it. It's kind of creepy to think, until you find out that it parallels the real world. According to the testimony of people who have actually eaten other people, the taste of human meat does not reflect its beef-like appearance. Both serial killers and Polynesian cannibals have described humans as being most akin to pork than anything else. Bacon do be good. If you watched this far, thank you so much. Be sure to subscribe and like the video. I will continue to post weekly and keep producing long form content for your enjoyment. Later.